Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. This video will be about dynamic tiles. So, the idea of dynamic tiles is um, that sometimes you want something dynamic to happen with your map tiles, which is by default not possible. So let's imagine that you want a ladder to appear dynamically, for example when talking to a character or when pressing a button. In this example it will be when pressing a button. Sprite. So you can see the tutorial about buttons if you don't remember or if you haven't seen it. Because tutorial tutorials can uh, can be seen in any order. I mean, we often need some stuff uh, from previous tutorials, but um, I, I try to to keep them as most imp uh, in uh, as much independent as possible. So I will make a solid switch this time, and it will need to have a name: ladder switch. So. Tiles. I explained maybe several times already that they they come from here, and they are they are static. So you create them on the map, and what's important is that they have no name, and it's not possible to give them a name, unlike other entities. There is no name field for tiles. Um, and that's because they are not dyna dynamic. They cannot be be accessed by Lua, by Lua scripts. And the reason for that is that they are optimized by the engine. So at runtime, actually, when your map is running, they don't even exist anymore individually. Instead, the engine keeps some information about um, their graphics to be able to still draw the, the result of uh, all tiles placements. And it also keeps uh, an 8 by 8 grid of the, the ground information. So for each 8 by 8 square, is this a wall, is this traversable, is this uh, water, is this a hole, etc. But um, tiles individually they no longer exist. They are optimized away at runtime. Which is a problem when you want something dynamic to happen. So you can uh, you can use all these entities but um, they all have their own purpose. Dynamic entities, teleporters, chests. If you just want uh, dynamic tiles, so here is how to do them, how to create them. First, you create them as, as static tiles, um, as normal tiles, like we did. And then there is this menu option, convert to dynamic tiles. So if you do that, they are no longer of type tile, but of type dynamic tile. Which means that they can have a name. So they are no longer optimized away at runtime. But um, that's not really a problem, because typically in a map, uh, most tiles will stay normal tiles and and will still so f for most parts for the most part uh, the tiles will still be optimized and you will have nice performance and actually uh, since 1.5 you can have hundreds of dynamic tiles without any real performance issue Uh, okay. So, and by the way, you can make huge maps with uh, thousands and thousands of styles thanks to all these optimizations. So, we need to give them a name. Oops. Ladder tile 1. So, we have 3. And we will not enable them at start. So, this checkbox is handy. 
Actually, if you don't check, if you uncheck it, it's equivalent to calling set enable false at the map start in the map on certain event. I'm pasting the same name for all three times, but actually the name is automatically incremented here. Ladder tile 2, ladder tile 3. Okay, so now that I have unchecked this, ladder should not be here. Okay. And oops, my switch is workable. I wanted to make a solid one. I only put the solid sp switch sprite, but okay, solid. So it can be activated with the sword. Okay. And now let's make our script. When the ladder switch is activated, so you can see the tutorial number 23 about switches if you don't remember. But ladder tile 1 set enabled true. Same thing for the other two, and maybe play a sound. Okay, and it works. So for dynamic tiles, the same rules are as normal tiles apply. So when there are several overlapping tiles on the same layer, okay, they are all on the same layer here, only the, the top of the trees and in another layer. When there are several tiles and if, if they overlap each other, it's the highest one who wins. So this one is in front of this one. So the cliff actually becomes traversable. It's the ladder who wins. And actually since this, th these three ones are dynamic and these ones are static, um, the dynamic ones are necessarily always in front of the static ones. Static ones are uh, can be seen as the background, if you want, of the map, or more exactly of the layer, because you can still have several layers. So, okay, the the top of the of the tree here is on the on layer one. When this is on layer zero, so you can always organize things by layer if you want to put some tiles in front of your dynamic tiles. Okay, so just to clarify that when I say these ones are always uh, to the front of, stat of static tiles, it's to the front but in their, in their own layer. Of course, everything that's on, higher, on a higher layer will, will be displayed above. even though this one is a static tile. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so let's try another example. This example. We'll make a water pool. So let's say that we have some water here initially. Actually we have, I'll start by the beginning, we have a chest with any treasure, it's not the, really the point here. Chest and there is some water and you want to make some puzzle and the player has to remove the water. So again we will do it with a switch. But maybe a walkable switch this time. Uh, switch walkable. Play the switch sound. Okay. 
And why not put a, a vase on the switch? Because this is very easy to do in A Link to the Past. No treasure. Sun when destroyed it's stone. Okay. And don't hesitate to keep common entities like this in your inside store map. So I put some doors, some rooms, but not a lot. And probably you will also need the, the vase. Okay, so if I start the map, I have my switch under the vase. And I have to create a Lua event to remove the water. So, uh, did I give a name to the switch? Maybe not. Unactivated. So when the switch is activated, I just want to remove the water. So again, I will need a name for the dynamic tile. It's not dynamic yet. Dynamic tile, and it will be on yes layer one, same layer as the above layer. Because um, because uh, the hero might be able to swim at some point. So. Did I give a name in the end? Not. No. Enable a start, yes. And water set enabled false. And there are some sounds actually for uh, filling or draining water. Water drain begin and water drain. So what I usually do is that I play both at the same time. I really start both at the same time because play sound um, does not wait for the sound to finish. It it immediately returns. So both will be heard at the same time. And I think it looks quite the same as A Link to the Past. Not very sure, but that's not really the topic of this tutorial. So it works and you could actually use remove if you're absolutely sure that um, that you don't want the water to ever come back. It still comes back when the map is reloaded, but uh, oh yeah, I forgot to <laughs> put my teletransporters to set up my teletransporters correctly. Um, so I want to go to outside outside map of this tutorial which has no no cave so let's just create one real quick direction oops south and the teleporter teletransporter so re we we just removed it from the map that what I was I say what I was what I was saying is that when the map is created again of course all its entities are created again. Um there is a missing jumper here. Like this. On layer one you can check layers again. So layer zero, layer one and layer two. We can use the keyboard shortcuts zero, 0, 1 and 2 if you want. So let's try actually without re removing the water first. And okay, it works. But I'm stuck now. So maybe we should put some stairs. here 
So these three tiles are at layer 0 and I don't see them but they are here. The other three are, are on the higher layer and actually the jumper resize jumper should be like this because now we have st some stairs and if you re if you saw the tutorial about platform stairs like this um, you know that you need this entity otherwise you just put some tiles some stair tiles that have no special effect and upwards is left and it's a platform stairs okay So you have to test carefully every case, jumping to, uh, into the water, trying to use stairs, and then all the same but without the water, jumping, going both ways. Okay, it works well, except that um, when the water is still here, you you hear the, the stairs sound here, the stairs are, are activated, so it's a bit strange. So maybe what you want to do is to initially disable this stairs entity, so it needs a name, and it in our map script, when the map starts, stairs set enabled force. Actually I, I will also use set enabled for the water because it's more, it's more de general general and there is no special performance issue if you keep the an entity alive but disabled versus really removing it from the map so yes if, re if you remove it it will be really destroyed but you won't you won't notice it, a performance difference. So okay, it works, but uh, I forgot to finish the job here. I have to enable stairs again when the water disappears. So for now, it's like this. And we haven't seen how to allow the hero to swim yet, but um, that's in a real game. That's a case you you will have you would have to also check. Does everything works correctly? If the player can swim in the pool. But um, okay, that's enough for dynamic tiles. So again, they work like normal tiles. They have the same same rules as normal ties except that they are to the front and um by the way so i was saying what well, yes they are always above or the above static tiles because they are at, at dynamic entity level so they can be below or above the jumpers for example here if you do bring to front they are now above the jumpers so of course it, it makes no difference here because uh, they don't overlap at all but it was just to to be very precise and what else did I want to say about dynamic ties yeah so they work like normal ties but now that you have access from them from Lua access to them from Lua you can not only use set enabled which is really the most frequent case but you can also use everything else that's available in the entity API so change their position uh, you can even move them you can, you can create movements on them so that's useful to create for example some um, floating platforms some moving platforms above holes and we'll see an advanced tutorial about that one day.
it's also possible to create them f from Lua scripts but this is not often used it's much easier to create them from the editor if you don't want to see them initially you can do like we did here like we did here um, you uncheck enable at start and that's it okay so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about dynamic tiles that's all for now see you next time bye